Breaker was Halo Infinite's first big team battle map released post-launch, and one of my first assignments after joining 343 Industries was working with my senior sound designer Robbie to implement audio in a way that fulfilled his sonic vision for the map. So, here's a quick overview of some of the audio implementation that went into that. There are a lot of ambient sounds in Breaker, and some of the most obvious are the ones belonging to the plasma pool and the lava. Both have consistent loops playing, but they also have a bunch of one-shots that are triggering randomly to help make them feel more dynamic. And of course the map designers put a kill volume on the lava so that you die when you jump in, so I put a trigger volume next to that to play a sound on death. And the same thing happens with the plasma. Now, not all sounds are as obvious as these. Here we have four pieces of metal debris and a wind spline stretching from the first one back left to where I'm standing. In Wise, I'm using a meter plugin to route the wind volume to an RTPC, which I then use to increase the volume of metal rattling. So when the wind picks up, we get rattling. I also have just creeks throughout the map that I put. They're not hooked up to wind or anything, but it's just to help fill out the space and, and really create the mood. And there are also sounds tied to effects, like these sparks. Now this is easy. The effects have an event for sparking. We put the sound on the event. So when the event does its thing, we get sound. Over here in this tunnel, I'm putting Wise's cone attenuation to good use. We have two positionals. One is this resonant tunnel sound you hear when you're outside the tunnel, but when you're inside and you turn around, well, you hear the outside. Now, Wise's cone attenuation allows me to make sure the player only hears what's relevant to them. On the other side of the map, you can hear the multiple splines I've placed for this toxic sea here. Uh, one along the bottom, as well as one in your center of vision. And this is to make sure that if you were to jump off or as you walked along the cliffs to your right, you had a consistent experience. Uh, there's also some ravens sprinkled along the cliffs to your left and some creaking in the distance for the wreckage. With these chutes here, there's some ambience, but what's really cool is the spline we have going down the chute that only plays sound when a player gets close. It allows us to fake a physics interaction by just playing slide sounds when the player is nearby. It works pretty well. Here inside the command center, we've got some more positionals on the machines here, some of the other computers in this space, and these uh, monitors on the walls. When the laser's about to fire, we have an alarm sound. And because the laser is such a big moment, we attenuated it so that players can hear it all the way across the map, even though you don't really hear the laser itself from this distance away. Right up close though, you can hear the super cool laser sounds in all its glory. For this, there's two parts. There's the animation itself of the laser moving back and forth. And so all the clanging and creaking and stuff like that, that's audio keyframes on an animation. But the laser itself is an effect, just like the sparks. So we have sounds on different parts of the laser, on the top, the middle, and if we jump down, we can hear the very bottom where the laser interacts with the lava. And finally, as a laser finishes, we can hear one more sound here attached to the animation of this dynamic platform. And that's about it. There's more implementation goodness that went into it, but I think that's a good general overview of some of the types of sounds and methods of implementation we used to get this map sounding real good. I've had a lot of fun working on this map, and I'm really happy with how it came out. <laughs>